safe to say that the, this uh, school of energy psychology and all the methods that are contained in, under comprehensive energy psychology is really an energetic extension of what we might have called systematic desensitization, in a way? Well, actually, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which brings us to the third thing of mm -hmm. memory reconsolidation. That was what I was going to ask next. <laughs> so systematic desensitization says... Yeah. You know, that if you uh, are with something, you, you, there's a problem, and you, you slowly, slowly wear down mm -hmm. the response. Mm -hmm. It's this slow, stepwise learning mm -hmm. experience. And it would predict that it takes a long time to relearn things. Mm -hmm. right? But that's not what actually happens, mm -hmm. at least with EP, and other things as well, it turns out. But with EP, what happens is you focus on, let's say, you know, focus on some, some traumatic incident, you do the tapping, you do whatever it is you do, and then the person basically reports that that memory is forever changed. It never comes back. Mm -hmm. Ever. Mm -hmm. That's weird. You mean like amnesia? No, they know what happened. Mm -hmm. They just, it just doesn't come back the same way. It doesn't come back, you know, when you have a flashback, when you have a, a or a quasi-flashback, mm -hmm. I think about Vietnam or Afghanistan or whatever, mm -hmm. and I'm acting as if I'm there, right. you're, the whole thing is activated. So this gets into the into memory reconsolidation work, which, um, and there's a there's a science behind it, and, and then a guy named Bruce Ecker, and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. I think it's Tiller, uh, they wrote an interesting book called, um, uh, oh, oh, it's Unlocking the Emotional Brain, where, yep. they, where they're, yep. where they're uh, bringing this, this neuroscience work to psychotherapy. But basically, what memory reconsolidation suggests is that, and I'm going to do this in a very simple way, that when a memory comes up out of... We don't walk around with memories of all kinds of things all the time. Right? Right. When a memory comes up, it comes up with whatever it's associated with. So right. it, there's the thought, there's the feeling, there are bodily... The, your, your, your biochemistry, mm -hmm. right. it all comes with it. Mm -hmm. And if it's a traumatic memory that's not processed, all of that stuff comes with it. And the problem is, if I sit and I talk about it, or I do ab reaction, or we do um, prolonged exposure, which makes me, which I think is a horrible, uh, you know, approach, is torture. If we do all that, um, what happens is when it goes back, it kind of goes back pretty much with the same old, same old, with all that stuff. And with systematic desensitization, says yes, it'll go back with a little difference, a little difference, a little difference. It's this long, arduous process. But memory consolidation suggests that if the memory comes up and you can do a certain number of things, three of them to be precise, and one of the major ones mm -hmm. is that the person has uh, basically a, a, a felt access to a totally different way of being with that experience. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same. It, 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 it acts as, a, as a, something totally different. Mm -hmm. That's... The if that happens, and a few other things, when the memory goes back in the store, mm -hmm. it goes back with in the new formulation. And when it comes back out, it comes back out the, the, the way it went in that last right, time. Right, the new formulation it is never, the way it, it comes in. It, when it goes in the store, it's permanently changed. Yeah. You see? And so... That explains, so when we talk about polyvagal fear, we talk about amygdala de deactivation, mm -hmm. those things are the process by which all the stuff um, down regulates and the affect goes down, the person gets calmer and all that. But then it also meets the criteria of, of memory reconsolidation so that it goes in in such a way that it never comes back out again the same way. And that's where, so the next time the person thinks about it, mm -hmm. They go, oh, it doesn't bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. And now they don't have to be afraid of it anymore. And that has its own life. So you have this kind of unfolding of how, how it plays out in your life. And you can, there are various steps that you can do to magnify that, that, that kind of mm -hmm. unfoldingness. Mm -hmm. You said there might be three parts to memory reconsolidation? So the three steps to, uh, to activate this kind of memory reconsolidation mm -hmm. changing of, of experience. Number one is you need to um, call up the memory itself. So mm -hmm. it has to come up in some active form. Mm -hmm. Second thing you need to do is you need to create a, a counter experience. Mm -hmm. That another, you have to 
represent the, the memory in such a way that it really fundamentally contradicts uh, the experience, the, you know, the meaning mm -hmm. of the other experience. So it's mm -hmm. just radically different. And then the third thing is you have to repeat that several, you have to mm -hmm. repeat step number two mm -hmm. several times for it to really, you know, nerves that fire together, wire, wire together, right? Yeah. So, th so if, let's look at what happens with, uh, it could either be EFT or TFT or, or and, and other approaches as well. We keep mm -hmm. always mentioning these two, it's sort of unfair to everybody. Or even mm -hmm. TAT, for that yeah, matter. Yeah. Uh, there are AIT, for that mm -hmm. So what do we do? We say, first of all, we call, I'd like you to think about the problem. How much does it bother you? It's at nine. Mm -hmm. So clearly it's active. Right. Right? Yeah. And then we do the tapping, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the suds ends up going, let's, we'll, let's keep a simple version. Let's say we tap a few turnarounds and the suds goes down to, to zero or near zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's our... So in a certain way, now I say, think about the problem. How much is it bother you? Zero. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. That's that's weird. And that's, you know, weird. So there, there's your second condition. And then we say, okay, now go in, go into it again. Tell me, I want you to repeat it again. Tell me, is, let's see if there's anything else there. So mm -hmm. we, and in our testing of the work, we're going to go in at least two, if not three times to really see that there's nothing there. So the person has multiple experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It also happens if you're breaking it down into smaller bits from, you know, eight, from ten, uh, sets of nine to five to three, and you're working maybe on different aspects of the problem. Mm -hmm. You're getting repeated exposures to this thing that's getting less and less. So it's just getting less and less that's never been less and less before. Mm -hmm. And so the client's having this experience again, and um, there is this, again, going back to Polyvega, while well, I think this mm -hmm. is so powerful, by the way. Mm -hmm. So if you read uh, uh, other Ecker's book, I mean, there are ways to do this that I think are a little more cognitive. But with EP, it's this bottom-up thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's just different in your bones. You, you know, you might try to, you can't explain it. But you know it. It's a felt experience. It's felt sense. And it's happening in real time in, real in the time. sessions. And, you know, it, it, people kind of are a little stunned. In fact, sometimes yeah. you get the effect, they'll say, well, how much, what, what number is it at? You see they're totally calm. They go, it's a four mm -hmm. or a five. You go, and you ask them, are you, is it really a four or five now, or are you just remembering what it was? Right. Right. And they go, well, I, I, I don't know if it's going to come back. I understand. Mm -hmm. But right now, what mm -hmm. is it? Well, it's zero. You know, the person looking around, you know. You're waiting for the yeah, they're they're, waiting they're, for the other shoot drop, the drop <laughs> right. right? And it's yeah. like, so again, you're calling them back. Right. You say, well, it's a zero. Yeah, it's a zero. Is that weird? Yeah, that's really weird. Has that ever happened before? No, it's never happened. Go in, look at it again. Mm -hmm. Really? They're looking it around. It, and they're like, really? Like, huh? Mm -hmm. So you two, three, four times, they're in it, they're in it, they're in it. Mm -hmm. That's the third condition. So it's like in, internal rehearsals that are occurring in the session while we repeat the right. tapping rounds. Right. And then what happens yeah. is, whatever, and nobody really told you how this happens, but mm -hmm. when it goes back into long-term store, mm -hmm. th this it's, new version yeah. is what goes back in. So anytime yeah. it comes out again, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it turns out that sometimes it generalizes to other things that are similar. Especially if you've said, well, this means, yeah. this behavior means X. Mm -hmm. So, which are linked to other, like, I, this behave, this experience means that I'm, I'm a loser. This experience means I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm weak. This experience means I should be afraid. Mm -hmm. And then there are maybe ten other experiences like that. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, sometimes you have to work at it more explicitly, but sometimes it generalizes. The meaning making that people draw from their experiences seems to shift. Right. Which leads me into the next question is, so when a client walks into session, uh, I don't think that most people have really self-diagnosed all of these specific events no. uh, in any kind of way. So if you could speak a little bit to how a therapist coming new to the work would be able to address someone with a limiting belief system. I mean, that's usually how a client limiting. walks in, a limiting belief system. I'm unlovable. I don't think the world right. is a safe place. Right. How, how does that fit in? Well, generally what you want to do is you want to get specific examples. How do you know? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you're an NLP. How do you know? How does, mm -hmm. what story, what events have happened in your life mm -hmm. that have led you to believe that um, you're not lovable? Mm -hmm. 
well, you know, there was that time that Becky Sue mm -hmm. said that I'd never want to go with a guy like you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whatever else there was. So you gather a series of these and then mm -hmm. you treat those things. And you so, you know, in, in EFT it's knocking out the legs of the tabletop. Mm -hmm. But it's, again, this is not, um, it's, you're, you're, so the big thing is called the schema. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm unlovable. That's a schema in cognitive, right. right? But schemas are built up of specific events. Right. Even, yeah, as far as I know, even it's, even from cognitive psychology, that's what you'd say. And mm -hmm. the, way, you know, the way you change the schema is mm -hmm. you depotentiate these events at, the, at an unconscious level because you've mm -hmm. treated them. The en in an energy, from an energy model, look at it, it's, like, it's kind of like Star Wars or something, you know, where they would have the shield, not Star Wars, yeah, Star Wars, they'd have the shield and mm -hmm. there'd be this generator coming up and the shield right. would spread out. Right. Knock out the shield. And maybe there's five shields, mm -hmm. generators, generating this force field of so, I'm not lovable. Knock out the shields, knock out the generators, these events that say, Becky Sue rejected me. My right. mother said, I wish mm -hmm. you were never born. You know, th little things like that. So energy psychology is like sending in Obi-Wan to knock out the generator of go. the shield. I knew we, yes, we've got to get science fiction in there somehow. Right. <laughs>